The Inspector Panel in Unity is your one-stop shop for adjusting settings for any object, asset, and editor preference. For objects, the Inspector begins with a title, a checkbox for you to check if the state of the object will remain static in the game. This means it's a valid candidate for light mapping and navigation mesh baking. And then the tag and layer dropdowns. Tags allow you to assign a tag to one or many objects in order to address them via code whilst layers allow you to group objects and apply certain rules to these layers such as lighting or collision rules. After these elements, the inspector then lists components attached to an object, beginning with the transform, the default position, rotation and scale of your object. On any component, the inspector allows you to adjust fields in various ways. You can drag over the values, you can click and retype, or you can choose to reset the values using the cog icon to the right of the component. In addition to the cog, there is also a link to the reference material on the component, and you can get to this by clicking the blue book icon, and this will open the documentation page on this component. A context sensitive panel, the inspector changes to whatever you have selected meaning that you can adjust any object and immediately dive into settings and back. Because Unity makes use of dragging and dropping to assign values, sometimes you may click on items that take you to their settings, rather than the one you wish to apply them to. And for this reason, you can lock the inspector in order to work with a particular item and then unlock once you are done assigning settings. For example, on this game object, I have a script component to which I must assign an array of textures. But when I select my first texture, I want the inspector to remain on my game object rather than showing the textures settings. I could simply hold down the mouse or I can simply select the object and click on the lock at the top of the inspector. This way, when I select one or many textures, I can then drag and drop without the inspector changing focus. Once I'm done with this, I simply click the lock again, and I can then select anything that I need to. The inspector also offers a way of finding assets used on objects, for example materials. When clicking on an asset used within a renderer, you can see that asset highlighted inside the project panel. It does this by highlighting with a yellow outline. This helps you easily find the assets that your game objects depend upon. In this example, we can see an object that has a material assigned to its renderer. This particular material is then previewed at the bottom of the inspector and I can adjust that material directly from here. However, the other two objects that I don't have selected also use this material. So I must bear in mind that the actual material I'm adjusting is the original material asset inside the project and not a particular instance of an object in the same way that I can adjust the scale of this object without adjusting any other objects that also have a scale value. Components in the inspector can be disabled by clicking the checkbox to the left of their name. And the entire object can be disabled by clicking the checkbox next to its name at the top of the inspector. When objects are disabled in this way, you'll notice that their name is greyed out inside the hierarchy panel. And that's the basics of the inspector in Unity.